Welcome back to the third and final installment of building a transition in Blender for video. And we'll just begin immediately by looking at some of the variations in how we're going to add things like depth of field, um, along with other tricks to putting this in place and actually using it in Premiere. So let's get started. You'll notice it's kind of blurry down here and then it's kind of clear up here well the reason that's happening is because you can set the depth of field on a specific image when you're working on it so i'm going to hit escape to stop this and then we're going to go into the camera again and now we can start to mess with the depth of field so it's on the camera itself and then down here we have focus so if i click this little eye glass picker um, this used to be much more complicated in Blender. We can click that. Now this eyedropper is going to look around. It says object US flag. So I'm going to click that. The next thing we do, and I just kind of watch this viewport up here. Now it's focusing on this. But what I want to do is you can change it from radius to f-stop and just set the actual f-stop. Like if I want to go to a 2. Um, I don't know what, if that helps or not. So let's uncheck this. Let's go back here and hit render. And there we go. It's more like how a camera would focus now at this point with a two F stop. So it's a strong depth of field kind of thing. And then wherever the center of the scene is, that's going to be sort of the center of the focal point and then things sort of above it and blow it and around it sort of beyond that focal point are going to start to drop off so you can make that number larger and everything comes into focus and as you make it uh, smaller it's going to narrow that focus so think of it as as this flag is sort of moving close to us to away from us if we have a really tiny number like a two, that means it's going to be focused like just on this white strip or just on that blue edge. And then everything above it and below it should be really blurry. But if that, if it were, a you know, instead of an F2, an F10 or 15 or something, then the focal range of what's in focus gets much broader. Like it'll focus all the way down to the white, and almost up into these stars. And so right now we're seeing what that effect is here. We have a lot out of focus, a little bit into focus at the top here by the stars. <clears throat> Again, you can just sort of adjust these things as you go and figure out how you want to render it. But now we're looking at... A, um, the effect that we want to have, which is a, a flag that is rendered this way. So again, back to the video toaster thing. Um, if I were, you know, in, in the video toaster example, I showed you uh, there was a, a, uh, a moment where you could see, you could see these, these um, sports characters, like this football player right here that um, will kind of interrupt the screen and as he interrupts the screen and crosses it behind them or through their cut there through their golf swing or in the ball here um, it's transitioning the video well i wanted to do a similar thing with a flag by basically if you look up in this box here see there's the full render i hit escape if i grab my camera here and move it left or right what i wanted to do was have the background here be like let's say a chroma key green so the way you do that is i'm just going to go to world i'm going to go ahead and grab this color i'm going to make it real bright and i'm going to make it real green and then up here in this rendered world let's go up to rendered um, you'll notice that that's real green and then as i drag the camera through the uh, flag I'll see this cool thing. And then when it comes out the other side, theoretically, then I could be revealing another video. So the flag in its animation could act as, as a, um, as sort of a, a tra video transition. Instead of being a silhouette, it'll be a, this beautiful flag, right? Um, but the, you'll notice one thing that's awful about this is that right now, um, it's not really doing what we want it to do because again, with, with Blender render, um it wouldn't do what's going on here which is the atmosphere around this is reflecting on this material turning the flag green in cycles it does that light bounces you know and you get variations of shadows and light and so we don't want that 
So the best way to deal with that is I'm going to click on like uh, the world again here. This is these are the world settings. I'm going to go down to ray visibility, and remember we have a diffuse sort of effect here. Well, what I'm going to say is these light rays that are bouncing around they shouldn't affect any diffused textures or materials. So if I check that, you'll notice that, oh my goodness, the flag goes back to looking normal, right? And while everything else um, stays green. So now I get like this chroma key green behind the flag that I'm moving sort of through this flag and out the other side. Well, it's the flag is sort of gone looking really dark. Well, that's because a lot of the light in the scene off of the atmosphere the walls like the background was sort of a gray and that was bouncing a lot of light on the flag so now we're gonna have to crank up this light here so right now if I go back to the light let's just kind of go through there we go that point lights looking pretty good uh, let's just make it maybe bigger um, and so I could use that so we'll go back to one now we have um, I can move the camera back and forth. So let's imagine we want to actually render this. So the trick would be to figure out first, well, where is the flag starting to look kind of in the neighborhood of uniform? And right now, we it looks like uh, we're going to have to re-render that flag. If you go back to like physics for the flag, let me hit escape. The flag selected. If I go to physics, <clears throat> it tells you right here that it's got memory, but the cache is outdated. That means we have to sort of re render this. So, again, option A, and it'll go through and re render this. So, I'll jump to the end real quick in a minute. Okay, so our, our animation has regenerated, and at this point, um, what I want to show you is how to. Um, move from move the camera from one side of the animation to the other um, in a in a over a period of time and so the best way I know how to do this is to just do it for you but before we go there I want to show one more thing um, just so you know how to do it and so the what I want to show you is in the actual camera settings there's one other setting that I didn't select but that you could select which is down here it's called motion blur i'm not going to click it but what it does it gives you the ability to set a number of parameters so if i click this it's going to make me regenerate everything again which i don't want to do but basically what it will do is it will um, as it's going through the animation one of the things that adds to the realism of something that's uh, photographic if it's moving a little bit fast is that a camera might not be able to keep up with it right so to to compensate for that and help to make things look realistic what we do is we would add motion blur and um, what I would recommend is something to the effect of once you select motion blur it's this shutter here this is a misnomer but what it is it says time taken in frames between shutter open and close in other words this is the number of frames so it says well it sets the shutter to half a frame but what I would say is maybe have it go two frames or three frames. So in other words, uh, three frames worth of uh, motion or two frames will probably be more than enough or one and a half frames. The idea meaning it'll kind of generate two frames and then uh, like one in one position, one in the next frames position, and then it will apply or interpolate sort of the difference, which will be like a sort of a horizontal blurring of that. And then the next thing is it gives you these options um, up here that say um, you can set it to end on the last frame, start, end on sort of the start frame or on the center. Meaning if if you um, if you want to look like it's dragging off as as the flag cuts through from left to right, you want to have it. Um, start on frame so that the end of the blur kind of drags off of like these stars for example they'll kind of like blur out to the right um, the most realistic thing to do would be to say uh, center on frame which means that it's just going to interpolate like one frame versus another and it'll be uniformly blurred as it's cutting through the scene but if you want to see things a little more clearly, then I would interpolate on sort of the the opposite of the drag edge. So if we're moving the flag from left to right, have it 
um, have it center on the start, not the end. And then that will give you what you want. And then you can also set the shutter curve. And what this does is these are these little shapes here down at the bottom. So in other words, it gives priority to say like the center or or just sort of an overall averaging. It, you know, it's how it's, and I'm not gonna do it because I think it looks sharper if you don't, but it just looks a little less realistic, but it is sharper. So the way to set this up is, again, if I drag sort of through this down here, you'll see the flag and the fact that it all rendered out nicely. So what we need is to pick the position. So I'm gonna go back to like, I think the flag is sort of in full realized wave at around 60. That's where it sort of starts as you can see there. And what I wanna do is I wanna move the camera to its starting position. And I want this animation to go from completely green on one side like this to completely green on the other side in about 90 to 100 frames. That'll be a full three seconds, right? 30 seconds, 30 frames per second times three for three seconds is 90. So if I go about 100, let's say, then we have a good rounding. So I'll start here. I want to set a keyframe right here to start at at the 60th frame. To do that, I'm going to hit I on the keyboard in this area. And I'm going to say record the location. We're selecting the camera, so I'm going to say I record the location. And I'm also going to hit I again and say record the rotation. <clears throat> As I then move forward to the 100th frame, let's see, that's where we want it to end. It's right here at the 100th frame. That'll be us on the other side. And now we're totally off on the other side. And then this will be where we want to end. So now again, notice that if I drag back a little bit, we're kind of almost off the top. So what I want to do here is I want to drag down just a smidge, like about like that. And I think I want to rotate it a little. So I'm going to hit R and then go down just a wee bit more. There we go, somewhere around there. And now off the end. And so it'll slowly, I'm gonna go a little bit lower. It'll slowly move and rotate now when I hit I to say set the position now for both location and rotation. Okay, so now we're, we're we got points at either end here. So, at this point, if I were to scrub this timeline now, we'll notice that the camera should move. Up here, we're seeing it move, as well as here. So you're seeing the camera move through the frame. Oh, there. it seems like at the start, it's okay, but now it's too low or something. So what I want to do is, I think when I get in the middle, I'm going to raise this up. So right here, I want to raise it up. to about there. And now I'm gonna just do um, just location. So I'm gonna hit, so it'll it'll do the rotation all the way through, but right here it'll all, it will track to the right location. So now if I look at that again, it should sort of slide up the flag a little slowly and now start to turn and come out the other end where we want it to. And that's that's the animation. So the next thing I want to do is I want to give a few more seconds. Like I might, if I actually rendered this, I don't want to render all this, right? I just want to render from like 50 to 110. And thankfully, <clears throat> there's a place you can do this. So over here on the camera, um, there's all kind of stuff we can do over here where we could say actually have the start frame be 50, not one, but you have to remember, you have to sort of hit alt a to render all of this or to generate all of this for the flag first, but right before it's time to render, you would say start actually start the render at 50. Notice that this will drag in now to 50 and we want to end at 110. Okay, and now this is the only bit that'll render from here. So get a little time there in the green, and then a little time there at the end 
just hanging out in the green and that's good that's how we want this thing to look and so the only other thing that I'm going to recommend is let's go to the middle here again where we have a little keyframe let's say I want just a snapshot of this so this is the last sort of lesson for this whole process here down here this says where the output's going to go so I'm going to hit this little folder I already have a project folder going so I want to go to my documents folder I'm going to go into my projects into video I'm going to go into the creating video transition, which is what we're doing. And then I'm going to go into assets. I'm going to save this photo here by just accepting this assets location. Now, because there's two options, there's the fact that I can render the camera view and then animate the camera view for render. I'm going to leave it as a PNG. Okay. And then I'm going to just, I can set it to 16 bit if I want, for example, or not eight bit is 16. We'll include transparency. I don't care about that. Eight bits fine. Um, 15% compression. Yeah. It doesn't really matter to me. Okay. But there's a number of options is the idea here. If I go ahead and say render, it's going to generate this image for me. What about video? What if I want to render some video? Out? Well, we'll leave the same folder here, but in this time I'm going to change it to to uh, this option PNG and this will become uh, QuickTime. Now this is the best format I've found. Um, setting it to QuickTime and then selecting JPEG and then going up to H.264 will give us a nice quality video especially if I drag this quality slide here all the way to 100% and now it will go ahead and create a video uh, for that entire render section 50 to 110 if I just hit animation remember it puts green kind of bumpers on either end so if I hit this it should attempt to go through this entire animation again one frame at a time in this little laborious render and then it's going to tell you sort of frame by frame how long it should take to render that frame it doesn't seem to to estimate the time remaining for the entire effort because it just has no idea how complicated each frame could possibly be. Now, I'm gonna to jump to the end here and just show you the end result. Okay, now that we've rendered out our video, let's take a look at that. Right here, here's our flag moving through this green chroma key background. Uh, we can see that that should work as a mask pretty good. Um, so again, what we want to do is I've got a, I've got a, a two videos over here. One is um, of this bird hanging out, and then one is just of this water. Um, you know, seen at the ocean. Um, and this is just stuff I pulled off of a free stock footage site. But what I did is I then I want to take this um, this asset, this flag video transition. It's a wipe transition, and I put it here on this um, scene. So I'm going to just show that. So basically, when you know, when I have this bird here, I want the flag to then start crawling over and completely cover the scene like that right before the next um, video clip appears. And then when I'm in the next video clip, it should be ready for the flag to end and then show that clip where the green is. And so to pull that off, what I've done is I just used a tool here in um, Premiere. This is CS6. It's not, you know, Creative Cloud. It's before Creative Cloud, but there's something called Ultra Key. There's a handful of like keying tools, but on Ultra Key, you can basically select the color you want. Um, then you can adjust the transparency, which deals with the edges of the green. And so let me go back into the green a little bit here. We'll go to the start. Um, you can see the green. I select the green. If I turn this back on, you can see that um, now the green goes away because I've made that color keyed out and then you can affect the transparency of the images around it um, how aggressively or not the composite's going to happen i'm going to set that as fairly aggressive so when it's whether i'm covering it or not it should be it should look um pretty pretty aggressive uh, let's try this again so i'm going to move back up to like in the 40s 
I think that's pretty good. So whether or not the video is there or not, it's not adding anything to the video as you can see. It's not like making it lighter or anything like that. And then as I move to the other end, you know, there may be some fringing right here. So the way we deal with that is, um, I'll move a little further. Okay, we have some dark, dark shadows and some fringing. So we have to be kind of careful here to not kill that. Like if we kill the shadows, it's going to start to create artifacts. We don't like that. So let's um, like maybe reduce some tolerance or um, no, we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over. Let's be sure I didn't mess up the video on the other side. That's looking pretty good. Um, so over here, I just want to lose some of this fringe. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to crank up these matte cleanup options. So we'll bring up the choke pretty high. That's pretty good right there, right? But then down here, I still have some fringe. So let's soften it um, pretty hard and aggressively. Same with the contrast. We'll crank up that contrast. Now it's really starting to disappear on um, that little fringe. Um, same with the midpoint. And so that should really kill that fringe. And so now, again, when the video is covered with this, we should be able to hide hide our um, our video and use it as like a wipe transition. And here it is in action. And it reveals the next scene. So the idea there might be, you know, maybe in reality we're doing some kind of like Memorial Day um, interview here where um, I want to move from talking to some some veterans who lost some friends in war and maybe while they're talking about that I cut to some I transition from them over on this scene I'm showing like some old war footage or possibly you know um, a, a, a graveyard or maybe just people having you know celebrating their friends or something like that you know whatever the case may be but the idea is that's how you would use that transition so in a in a nutshell, that is that is the effect we were going for. Um, let's see it one last time. So uh, you know, I guess that's it. Thanks everybody. Have a good one.